All right, uh, now we'll follow that legal challenge by the NFP, but if it's not successful, then the election will be called tonight as the IEC has planned. Over the last few days, we've been predicting the outcome as the SABC, even when only uh, some of the votes were counted. And that's with the help of advanced modeling methods from the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, the CSIR. We do this as the SABC because the CSIR's methods have proven to be accurate over and over again. Let's see how they did this time, how we did as the SABC as well, bringing you those predictions. Uh, to discuss, we're joined by the Statistician Council at the CSIR, that's Professor Pravesh Deba. Professor, thank you for being with us uh, once more. Let's start, we're going to bring up this uh, graph of the national results, uh, comparing your predictions as the CSIR with the outcome. And for the viewers, uh, if you look at this graph, a reminder that the bigger line with dots will be the CSIR's predictions uh, from early on and the smaller line that you will see is the actual party performance. So Professor, it's very close. Uh, explain the graph and, and uh, explain your, your methods and how you got this right. Okay, thanks very much. Um, <clears throat> so what you can see here is, uh, uh, as you was explaining, the, the dotted line is what we are predicting and the solid line is the actuals. And um, uh, we are looking at the top three uh, parties. Uh, so it is uh, for uh, ANC, uh, the DA, and for EFF. And one can see from uh, these graphs that, um, you know, from uh, around uh, you know, 10 to 50, 15 percent, uh, you know, of the, of the voting districts being in, uh, the model, you know, sort of stabilizes and we are able to, you know, quite accurately predict what the final outcome would be. We did have some challenges, though, and even at the national level for the EFF, you can see that there is a slight upward trend uh, in our estimates, uh, you know, from from the beginning to the end. So there's a, there, there's a slight, um, you, you know, upward trend that, that one can see. So, you know, that, that, that is what one is observing and uh, what one is estimating from here is uh, the, uh, the percentages for um, a, a, ANC, a DA and EFF. Yeah, but pretty pretty soon, uh, we'll, we'll uh, into the count, uh, very soon you did start getting the, the accurate uh, figure. L let's look at the, yes. the provinces. Um, Eastern Cape, uh, the ANC did very well there. Your modelling didn't get the, the DA spot on, I think, but uh, otherwise uh, performing pretty well. Uh, yes, no, that, that is true. Um, so we had, uh, for, for DA, I think there was an error, um, the margin of error of 2%, uh, whereas, uh, you know, for ANC, uh, we did quite accurately predict, uh, you know, what the final outcome would be. Um, and um, uh, for EFF, we were under predicting a little bit for, for the Eastern Cape. Um, you know, at, uh, in the early stages, but you can also see at the at, at the later stages, you know, the the, the lines have uh, uh, you know is is more horizontal, and therefore uh, the, the model has stabilized at that stage. Let's move to the Free State, another ANC stronghold, although I'm sure the ANC wishes it wasn't hovering uh, around 50%. Uh, that's where it, lend, uh, it ended up. Um, it's interesting to see from the lines that your modelling uh, got better, I, I guess, as more results come in. That, that's how it works. Yeah. Yes, no, that is absolutely true. Um, so, in, in the free state, uh, actually, you know, the the what we predi we're predicting was very close to the actuals, and therefore you can see the two lines are close for you know all the uh, parties. Um, it, it is showing that we were initially um, uh, overestimating for uh, DA and underestimating for EFF because you know it's only until about 40 percent of the data in that uh, the, the, the model is much more uh, stabilized yeah. and it is more horizontal at that stage. Uh, am I right to say looking at that graph let's stay on on that graph of the free state um, that at about 10 percent uh, of the vote in obviously you you always say you need a mix of demographics urban rural different wards across different areas uh, but with only 10 percent you, you you're getting pretty um accurate you're getting pretty close to to the truth which is quite amazing 
Yes, no, that is absolutely true. And, you know, uh, aside from just uh, having uh, 10% of the voting districts, uh, one must also realize that it is a very small uh, proportion of your total population because uh, that, that, that is voting. Because, uh, because very often it is the smaller voting districts that come in uh, because they can count, uh, you know, much faster and, and send the results in quicker. So, um, you know, if you're looking at the smaller voting districts and you add them up in in total, you know, these are much uh, smaller percentages of the total um, uh, in, um, or in relationship with the, with the total pop, uh, population that is uh, voting. Well, let's bring up the Gauteng graph. Your, your figures look uh, spot on there. They didn't match the results early on, but then the results caught up with you. You, you had predicted what, what yes. the eventual outcome would be. While we're looking at that Gauteng branch, then how do you do this? How do you get it right with um, the, the stats involved, with, like you say, with a, a very small group, but you can um, extrapolate to the end? Yes. Uh, so what we uh, do is uh, before uh, uh, before the elections, we actually use the previous the results of the previous election and create uh, twenty clusters for for each of the um, uh, provinces. Now these clusters are um, consist of our voting districts, and uh, we are looking. We, we put all the similar voting districts, uh, and, you know, in, in in a particular cluster. And when the voting districts uh, is declared, uh, you know, for, for this year, then uh, we we then assign um, a, a, a that voting district to the clusters that that we had in term, uh, you know, in proportionally. And we then sum sum them up, and you know, we are able to get the total. Uh, um, the total proportion for each of the political parties. Okay, so you're predicting human behavior uh, based on, on yes. where people live. Let's look at Quizzle in Italian. Well, it's not, uh, I wouldn't say human behavior, I would more say uh, uh, voting behavior. Sure. Um, Quizilla Natal is a big one. Let's bring that up. I, I think here people couldn't believe that the ANC would perform so badly. Um, and, and we'll also look at the main city, Etiquini. Uh, that is hung and that was confirmed today. Um, but again, pretty spot on all, all the way, uh, predicting a pretty poor performance for the ANC relatively to, to where it's been in this province. Yes, no, absolutely. So uh, again, you can see, uh, you know, around 15% of the data in uh, for, for the ANC that the, that line has stabilized. Uh, so, but, but it was also running very close to the actuals as well. Um, but one, one can clearly see that, uh, you know, uh, uh, at that stage, we, it did stabilize. So one would have known what the final outcome would, would be for, um, you know, the ANC. Yeah, no, uh, a, a lot of people just didn't believe it and, until it was called um, absolutely at the, at the end of the election. But you got that prediction uh, spot on. Uh, Professor, can we skip some of the other um, provinces, if you don't mind? Can we go to Etiquini and, and let's look at um, the, the city itself. Um, and there you see again the, the actual party performance uh, going up and down as the results came in. But your prediction line pretty solid and, and eventually the the two lines converge yes well this is a good example where you can clearly see uh, you know uh, we, we, uh, how the actuals is behaving um, and um, you know the, the, the model uh, from as little as uh, just over five percent of the data in uh, the, the model has stabilized for you know the uh, for ANC uh, uh, DA and and for EFF uh, we were probably at that stage of five percent uh, firstly you know it's very little data so it, it's not so reliable, but when you, when you look at it more around 15%, uh, you can see that you know the, the, uh, even for for DA, it has stabilized at that stage. Yeah, yeah I, I'm I'm blown away by, by how accurate you were, um, how early on, uh, Professor. Can we skip forward again and let's do one final graph uh, before we run out of time, Johannesburg? And and here there was huge contestation between uh, the ANC, the EFF, and Action SA, uh, many of the townships. And and let's uh, be clear that Action SA was a, a new player. Um, so so let's see how you did in Johannesburg. Take us through that graph. 
Yes. Okay. So you picked one of the best ones and one of the worst ones. <laughs> uh, for, for Johannesburg, certainly, uh, you know, the, the model did not perform well. Uh, and you can clearly see that. Um, so here, uh, in addition, we have the black line, which is uh, the um, action essay. And uh, you can see that action essay never stabilized in, in the model. It was continuously increasing. What, what it means is that we were continuously under predicting what uh, action essay uh, uh, would end up and um, obviously at a certain stage uh, you know the the, the actuals uh, so the solid line uh, would uh, would converge uh, with uh, our predicted value yeah. but uh, it, it actually happens very late so um, you know, with regards to this you can also then see that we were over predicting for the da considerably um, that, that you can see a downward trend uh, on on, on the predictions, uh, the ANC was not too bad in terms of our prediction, but there was a, there was a slight um, over uh, uh, right. over prediction for them. Professor, Thanks. we've actually lost that graph. So, so action essay maybe a little bit of a, a spanner in the works, uh, but overall very accurate. Uh, are, are you are you happy with the CSIR's uh, performance? Very quickly. I am happy with the uh, p performance of the model. Uh, it is just that uh, we need to go back and also look at, uh, you know, exactly what happened with uh, Action SA, or why it is that, you know, we were not able to uh, reasonably predict, um, you know, what, what the, the outcome would be for, for them. Uh, you know, we know that there are possible, there's a number of reasons, uh, you know, the, the obvious one is that they are a new um, uh, political party that has yeah. come in but uh, at the same time you know in 2009 when COPE came in the model performed very well when GOOD came in as a political party they you were able to predict quite accurately so it's not just that it is okay. also a number of other things as well. All right, so, so you go look at that. I mean, uh, many of the big parties, I don't think also, uh, well, I think they were also surprised at the performance of Action SA specifically uh, in Johannesburg. And of course, that makes a, a whole uh, coalition uh, governance uh, in Johannesburg and in some other areas in Gauteng very interesting. Thank you very much, Statistician Council at the CSIR, Professor Pravesh 